It's almost 70 years since the Nazi reign of terror ended, but Friedrich Novotny is still deeply affected by that time. The journalist and former director general of one of Germany's biggest public TV stations experienced the Nazi period as a child and Hitler's obsession with flags. This is a song about a flag flying ahead of us that ends up in the completely sick idea that the flag is bigger than death. We sang this song as children, and maybe we even thought that's the way it is, without thinking about what that meant, that the flag was worth more than death. We were presented with this inflated Nazi idiocy, and we absorbed it. Whether it was the cult of the flag or baking forms with engraved SS runes, experiences with symbols during the Third Reich shaped people's perceptions of flags and the national anthem during the post-war period. Should the country have a flag again, and what should it look like? This model was under discussion. And which national anthem should be played? That was a source of controversy for a long time. In post-war Germany, the thought of national symbols provoked disgust in many people, as it did with Friedrich Novotny. Allergic. My reaction in the face of national symbols after 1945 was allergic. Thank God there weren't any at the beginning. We were an occupied country. The occupiers flew their own flags. I remember there were minesweeping boats with German crews in the North and Baltic seas. They had to carry markings. So they wore some international symbol or the other because they didn't have their own flag. We were hung up about it. The Brandenburg Gate was a crossing point between East and West before the wall. It also features in the exhibition Flying the Flag in Germany's former capital, Bonn. The East German regime was less reserved about banners and anthems, but there was rarely heartfelt patriotism. It was dictated by the state. The state kept control of everybody. That went for small children as well as adults working for a living. The symbols of statehood certainly played a much larger role than they did in the liberal-leaning West. A first change towards patriotism across Germany came with the fall of the wall and reunification. Demonstrators in East Germany demanded unity and freedom. Their flag was the black, red and gold without the communist symbols. The protests led to success. Seventeen years later, a united Germany was awash with national flags. Germany hosted the 2006 World Cup. The mood was easygoing and people flew the black, red and gold without any hang-ups. The tournament was like therapy for the German people's relationship with their national pride. Before the World Cup, people were very worried that Germans would go too far, that patriotism would turn into this ugly image of being German, that patriotism would awaken the old evil fanaticism. But the experience of the World Cup was uplifting and liberating. Germans celebrated, they let themselves go. They were passionate, but at the same time charming hosts. Nothing bad happened, the world applauded. A huge burden was lifted, and now people can actually do that again. Let themselves go and celebrate. Friedrich Novotny reaches the end of the exhibition. This section deals with the World Cup two years ago. The 79-year-old is pleased about the flag-waving soccer fans. That was a happy and relaxed time. And the symbolic power of the national flag had its own special and relaxed meaning. There's no hint of the flag meaning more than death. That was a stupid slogan, which people were infected with and had beaten into them during the Nazi period. So 
so the flag can fly proudly again. Germans have developed a more relaxed attitude to their national symbols after decades dominated by trauma. And football was the key.